this week on Canadian Whitetail. Sometimes watching them for six and seven years is the best. And sometimes checking out a new area and getting a nice surprise, like a big old mature six by six with a great big flyer out the back. Sometimes that works too. Well, they left us. Well, that was nice of them. Yeah. We've had three entire setups stolen already and we're just heading to spot number four following the same little set of tracks. Deer hunting is a lot like life. It's not easy. And if you want results, it's a lot of work. And like life, there's no shortcuts, no workaround or easy way to your goals. And if your goal is to hunt the biggest free range whitetails that have ever walked, it's 365 days a year of preparation and dedication. For us, that's all fueled by a passion for whitetails and to share these hunts and the stories of these deer on film. As do-it-yourself hunters, success means a never-ending cycle of getting ready, scouting, and setting up, until all of that work is not work anymore and it simply becomes your lifestyle and what you do. And you do it so that when the season is finally here and it's time to head in and hunt, you have a chance. A chance for that one moment, that one second that we all dream about. A chance to experience that feeling that when all your hard work pays off, and that giant steps out. Gorgeous animal, unbelievable, incredible deer. Dean Partridge's Canadian Whitetail is proudly brought to you by Ozonix, undetectable, undeniable. Limb Saver, products that work. Big and J Long Range Attractants. The aroma is super strong. The range is super long. Excalibur Crossbow. The most trusted crossbows on the planet. Under Armour. Never detected. Always lethal. Elite Archery. The world's most shootable bow. Central Boiler Outdoor Wood Furnaces. Performance and value by design. Bog Pod. Monopods, Bipods and Tripods. The Whitetail Institute of North America, premium food plot seed specifically engineered for whitetail deer. And by the Heater Bodysuit, number one in cold weather hunting gear. The more time I spend in the deer woods, the more I'm drawn to the setting up, the scouting, and filming others, my friends, capturing that moment when they have the opportunity to take that deer of their dreams. That's largely took precedence over my own hunting and turned into a passion of its own. And as we'll see later in this episode, whether it's sports, hunting, any aspect of your life, there's always that small percentage, that one or two people that would like to take what you love to do and try to take that away from you, try to ruin it for you. To be with the hunter running the camera when a giant steps out, for me, is the ultimate high. To be the witness to all the hard work paying off has become something very important to me, just sharing these experiences with friends. It's just what I love, but I definitely still hunt. And every now and then I'll find a deer that catches my eye. And when that happens, it's right back to hunting mode. And late last fall, when we found a buck, that certainly caught my eye. By chance, on a new scouting mission in a brand new area, we found him. A big mature 6x6 with a big split flyer out the back. Well, I was in love. And with no time left, we were going in to get set up. Well, it's pouring rain and half tornado winds. But uh, it's already October 11th today or 12th? 11th. And we got permission on a new piece of land two weeks ago. We put a trail camera up there. The season closes here on the 15th, so just in four days. But we just checked the card, and there's a really nice mature 6x6 with a big flyer out the back. And he's been through here every day. 
quite a few days in good daylight. And uh, we've only got four days before the season closes, and then it's closed for five weeks, and then it's back open for two weeks. Yeah. So we're not going to wait. Um, we're going to go get wet and put up a, up a ground blind. That's what we're doing. And get wet we did, but that was really our only option. So we got the blind up and ready. Stevie's just finishing cleaning up the shooting lane. And it's still pouring rain, so we're just going to get out of here. The wind cover up any noise and the rain. Well, the rain will wash away any sense that we're here, so the only thing that's going to be here is this blind. It's out of place. We don't really have any brush to put up around it because all the leaves have fallen, so we put up some dead logs and we'll give it a little bit of a break and hopefully it's okay, but it's a deer that we really want to have a look at. He's an awesome deer and sometimes watching them for six and seven years is the best and sometimes checking out a new area and getting a nice surprise like a big old mature six by six with a great big flyer out the back. Sometimes that works too. This segment has been brought to you by Central Boiler Outdoor Wood Furnaces. A Central Boiler easily connects to your existing forced air, in-floor radiant, baseboard, or dual heat system to heat your entire home in domestic water. Central Boiler, performance and value by design. We were all set up on the big six by six flyer buck, and with only two days left in the early season, it was time to give it a try. We're just heading into our brand new spot. Everything's really new. We actually just got permission to hunt here two weeks ago. Uh, Steve and I came in and we did some scouting. We put up a couple trail cameras. And the one spot on a ridge, we found a really awesome old buck. He's a nice, heavy six by six with a big flyer out the back on one side. Now today's October 13th. The season here closes October 15th for five weeks. So we set up the blind two days ago in the rain. We'd never usually hunt a blind this early. We'd usually leave it for a week. But with two days left in the early season, we really have nothing to lose, so. It's a new property, a brand new blind. We've got a brand new cameraman tie. So uh, there's a lot of holdbacks, but you never know. Holdbacks would never bother me. You just never know unless you try. And with everything against us, we got in, Excalibur and Mike were ready and settled in for the evening. And when this doe arrived, well, she did not like the blind at all and the odds had beat us. We see no more deer for the rest of the evening. Day two certainly didn't provide better results, again seeing just one doe, who was very skittish of our poorly blended in and brand new blind. This was our last day of the early season. The downside was as I looked, and it took me till October 12th to find a deer that I was really excited about hunting, and uh, the season closed today October 14th, so we didn't have much of a chance to go after him. The upside is we've got five weeks now until the late season starts. That's a lot of time to be in here, do some more work, see how much we can learn about this deer. However, when opening day of late season came five weeks later, while walking into our blind, we came across a gut pile that we later found out was from none other than the big six by six flyer buck. That's right, he'd been taken by another hunter on opening day. And hey, that's just hunting on public land. And we couldn't have been happier for that lucky hunter. But now with literally days left in the season, I turned my attention to a buck that was definitely no stranger. It was a deer that we had a staggering 10 years of history with, and a buck that we called Evil. Evil, a historically legendary deer around our group. 10 years of history. We had been watching this deer since 2005 and near no encounters. Evil is definitely not a record breaking deer, but as old, smart, cagey, and as epic as they come. A deer unmeasurable by inches, but off the charts when it comes to experience, and a deer that I, or anyone knowing the history behind this deer, would be honored to hunt. But while heading in, well, we were in for a big surprise. Those people that I mentioned at the beginning of the show that like to stomp on things that other people love, well, they had made an appearance in the deer woods. So they left us. Well, that was nice of them. Yeah. You know, I knew it would happen sooner or later. We never had anything stolen, and someday, everyone we talked to has had stuff stolen. You know what? I noticed uh, a couple other gates open, and there's stock in there, and I know we didn't leave the gates open. Tracks going in, we better go check them spots. Where we have stands? Yeah. We've had three entire setups stolen already, and we're just heading to spot number four, following the same little set of tracks that go to each spot. Yep, there's the chair.
So we just got to our third spot in a row, followed the exact same skinny tracks then. They took our blind, they took our camera, they took the one chair, they left the big chair. So I mean, we're kind of at a loss here. Why are you filming this? We went spot to spot to spot and everything was gone. The blinds, trail cameras, even the chairs. Some hunter, wait, I wouldn't give them the honor of being called hunters. Some thieves had gone spot to spot to spot and taken all of our gear with just days left in the season. Welcome to this week's Canadian Whitetail Scouting segment. Locate, learn, set up, hunt. Brought to you by Big and J Long Range Attractants. The aroma is super strong. The range is super long. Time, effort, and scouting equal success on big deer. There are just no shortcuts that provide continuous results. With that said, it's never too early in the year to start watching those bucks in the area you're hunting. And although I scout all year long, usually throughout the winter months, my cameras get a break. But they are surely back out in the spring to capture that first bit of antler growth on my Big and J mineral sites. By using the mineral sites in the spring, not only do I get a jump on my summer scouting, the mineral is also helping those bucks develop the best rack possible. Which puts me in a way better position to take that trophy buck come fall. This week's Canadian Whitetail Scouting segment has been brought to you by Big and J Long Range Attractants. This segment of Canadian Whitetail has been brought to you by Hoyman Premium Tree Saws. Hoyman Premium Tree Saws, the first truly extendable folding saws. Well, now what's the plan? Well, now we uh, head back to the house and grab some more blinds, get reset up. Well, we're setting back up because they're, uh, we're not moving. I mean, they're not, they're not going to win. Well, we got deer that we've been watching all year here and uh, we need to get on them, so. There's always more blinds. Yeah. Trying to be the optimist, I looked at it and said, well, hey, I love the setup the most of all. So now we just get to set up the same spot again. Well, surely there's a lot of things that you can do to me, to us. But to try to take that away, to try to take deer hunting away from us, that's just not going to happen. And we're just going to come back every time stronger. Because our success isn't based on where our blinds are. It's based on scouting, spending time in the field, knowing those deer, and knowing what we're doing. And a lifetime of learning how to work around obstacles in any given area to continue to have encounters with mature deer. Working around obstacles is just what we were about to do, and with only days left in the season, we were headed in, just a day after the thieves had visited our spots. Steve and I just got in here and got settled, and this is actually one of the blinds that got stolen that we reset up just yesterday. And uh, I think judging by everything we looked at, by the tracks from the people that stole all our stuff, it looks to me like we got the blind up in time, and it's not really gonna hurt much because I think we got the blind up before any deer came through there and seen it. I think those blinds were taken either late, late at night, or early in the morning, and uh, this is the spot that Evil's at, and uh, he's a pretty tremendous deer. And these guys aren't gonna ruin our hunt. I mean. It's not my concern whether or not we shoot a deer. It's my concern that we're sitting here in the bush enjoying this. And I mean, it's the middle of the rut. Anything can come through, there's evil. And we're here and we're not gonna let it bother us and we're just gonna enjoy our night, right Stevie?
thieves or no thieves, no one can take this away. Just enjoying the deer woods, and with deer movement good, and enjoying the view. Little did we know the encounter that we were about to have. You're watching Dean Partridge's Canadian Whitetail, North America's premier wild whitetail show. Welcome back. Before the break, a very unlikely encounter was about to happen. For the first time in years, I was on the spot, with a stranger buck out front, and he was big. Jumbo big. With a helpful coyote spooking the buck to jump over the fence, I knew I had to make my decision quick. And after getting a good look, it doesn't take me long to decide to take this beautiful mature deer, if given the chance. Example of what happens in a rut. We're sitting here for a deer that we've got can't like a decade of history with. Yeah. And we just shot a big mature deer that I don't believe we've ever seen in our life, Steve. No. Like on the trail camera ever. And he come up and I thought when he was coming through the swamp there, I could see him before you could see him. Yeah. That dark forehead, I thought, oh here comes evil. He go, no, he's way too wide for evil. That was awesome. I tell you, I mean what we love is to watch these deer, you know, mature over the years and it's it's taken precedence even over the hunting is just to follow these deer but i'll tell you it's just as exciting to hunt the rut i mean usually we hate the rut because we base all our hunting on patterning hey eh? and during the rut they don't have a pattern so it's kind of hit and miss but there's something awesome about i mean that's a giant body deer hey eh? oh, big wide like yeah. 22 inch wide yeah mature white tail that you've never seen in an area that you hunt incredibly hard just out of nowhere hey? yeah he didn't go very far at all, did he? Nope. See him right there? Yeah, just went over the hill. There he is, eh? What a gorgeous animal. He's wide, isn't he? Awesome wide. Yeah, nice brow tines. That's just incredible. I mean, we watch these deer for years and years. And we watch them grow up, we watch them mature, and then we target them. And it's probably been a decade since we've shot a stranger buck like this, eh? Yeah. And I tell you, it's a lot of fun watching these deer grow but it's just as much fun to have an opportunity at a stranger deer like this. And that means that there's a good chance that evil will get to live. And for guys that know me, know that I'm completely all right with that. That actually might be the best case scenario because we've watched that deer for nearly 10 years now. And uh, he's a pretty cool special deer. And this is a pretty cool special deer, but just an incredible year. I mean, we had a tough year and to get a reward like this for a lot of hard effort is just unbelievable. Look at the head on him, hey? Yeah, he's, he's got a head gorgeous. like a horse, a big yeah. Roman nose on him. Big Roman nose, yeah, he's a mature buck, there's oh. no doubt about that. He towered over that fence when he came out to jump across the fence, hey? Yeah, he sure did. Just a gorgeous animal. Unbelievable. Incredible deer. You know, I thought a lot about how to finish this episode talking about these thieves. About how they're not going to push us out of any given area. And what a problem people like this are in the world today. And also the huge threat they are to hunting as a whole. But then I decided, I'm not gonna give these thieves any more screen time. That's for the police to deal with and for us to learn from. Sure, now we have to set up multiple trail cameras at each spot and watch the gates, but focusing on that here, right now, well, that would take away from the most amazing part of this whole experience. The beautiful old buck that we were so fortunate to have an encounter with, who was actually the first deer in nearly a decade that I've taken without having a history with. And having taken that deer while hunting the buck that we have the most history with, was truly a unique and appreciated experience. And that's what I'm gonna see when I look back on this season and what I'm gonna appreciate and what I'm gonna to continue to appreciate year after year. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Canadian Whitetail. Closed captioning for Canadian Whitetail is provided by huntsask.ca.
your information source for Canada's best whitetail hunting. Hunt Saskatchewan, Canada. Canadian Whitetail has also been brought to you by Ramcat Broadheads, Hits Like a Ram, Cuts Like a Cat, Cool a Buck, Portable Walk-In Cooler Systems, Scott Archery, CBE Bow Sights, and Black Eagle Arrows. Canadian Whitetail has also been brought to you by these fine sponsors. 